In this video, we're starting off with the chapter algebraic expressions by having a look at important algebra theory that you need to know. Algebra is the language of mathematics, and it ensures that everyone around the world works in the same way. For this, there are a few general practices and notations that you need to know. In algebra, it is not only numbers that are used anymore, but letters also form part of the calculations. The letters are used as placeholders, and when necessary, they can be substituted with a specific value. The first important new notation that you need to take note of is when I multiply. We already know about different notations for multiplication. 3 times x can also be written as 3 dot x, or we can say 3 bracket x. All of these imply that we are multiplying. In algebra, there is now also a fourth notation for multiplying, and that is simply to write everything next to each other. So 3x means 3 times x. Or if we have 2xyz, this means 2 times the value of x times the value of y times the value of z. In algebra, we prefer using the method where we write everything against each other because it is quick and effective. Another general practice used in algebra is when we have more than one letter, we always write them in alphabetical order. So, For example, D times A times B will be written in alphabetical order as A, B, D. And when we have a term that consists of numbers and letters, we always write the number first and then the letters. An example of this will be when I multiply x by 7, I will not write x7, but I will write the number first and say 7 times x. In algebra, there's also some new terminology that we will use. Firstly, you need to be able to identify terms. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so by addition and subtraction. Any multiplication or division forms one term. Here are a few examples. In our first example, we have 3 times x times y, which means we have one term. And the same goes for our second example. Here we have minus 2 times x, which is one term, divided by z, which still only makes it one term. In the next example, the 4 times x can also be written as 4x. And then we have two pluses, implying that we have to add. So here we have the first term of 4x. And then to this we have to add 7x, forming a second term. And then the plus separates the third term. So we have three terms. In the next example, we once again start off with multiplication, forming one term. And then a plus separates that from the next term. And then even though we have a plus again, the bracket implies multiplication and makes all of that one term. After that, we have a minus separating the next term again. So this means we have one term and a second term and a third term. In our last example, we have addition in the numerator, but we also have a big division line. And that line implies that everything at the top is actually in a bracket. So that makes it one term. After that, we have minus 15, and the minus separates the second term. So here we have one term and a second term. So a term can consist of a sign, which is a plus or a minus, then a number, which is multiplied or divided to letters. For the numbers, we use the term constant because their value stays constant. And for letters, we use the term variables because their value can change. Another new word that we are going to use is the word coefficient. 
coefficient consists of everything that is multiplied or divided to a specific variable. So if we, for example, look at a term like minus 7x squared, and I ask you, what is the coefficient of x squared? It will be the sign, the minus, and the 7 that is multiplied to x squared. Or if we have a look at a term like a half xy, and I ask you for the coefficient of y, then it is everything that is multiplied to y, which will be a half times x. Also note that this can be written as x times y over 2. And here the coefficient is still x over 2 or a half times x. Let's have a look at an example of how all this theory can be asked in the question. Consider the expression and answer the questions that follow. Question A. How many terms are in the expression? We already know that pluses and minuses separate terms. So here we start off with the first term and then the minus separates the second term from the first one. Then we have a plus separating the third term and another plus separating the fourth term. So here we have four terms in the expression. Question B. Give the constant term. A constant term is that term that cannot change value. In this case, the first three terms all have x's or variables in, which means their value can change. The only one that is constant is the last term, so our constant term here is 20. Question C. Give the coefficient of x squared. The coefficient is that part of the term that is multiplied to the specific variable, and in this case that will be minus 5. Question D. Give the coefficient of x. Once again, that is the part of the term that is multiplied or divided to x, and in this case, our term is x over 3, so the coefficient is 1 over 3. Question E. What is the exponent of the first term? The first term is 8x to the power of 3, which means our exponent is a 3. In the next few videos, we're going to have a look at a variety of calculations that can be done in algebra.